Hi there, I'm Jay from Sparkle and welcome to this video scribe tutorial. This is the second tutorial in our core series. Today I'll be showing you how to use the camera and zoom functions, importing your own images into video scribe and also adjusting the timings to really fine tune your scribe files. Okay, so previously Johnny created a scribe project and we're going to continue using the project he created. So as you remember, he had three items on the scribe. So let's just have a quick recap of where we were with that. So I'm just going to play it now with the preview. Now you may notice that when it's playing back, all the items have their own individual camera position. This is a default camera position. Each individual item can be set up with its own camera position or you can set them up in groups. So what I'm going to do is just show you the best ways to do that. Um, so first of all, uh, moving the canvas around, um, it's quite easy, so if you wanted to get a set position manually, you can just click and hold down the click button and drag the canvas um, to a new position. Um, so that's the um, most basic way of uh, adjusting your actual camera position. You also have these plus and minus symbols um, for camera views where you can zoom in and zoom out. So I'm just going to zoom right out now so you can kind of see the range that you have. Okay, so you get to about 5% and you may notice that you have this warning symbol. So if you select that, it tells you and warns you that you have a extreme zoom on there. So I would say um, don't zoom in more than, uh, zoom out more than 10%. Um, we'll go the other way now and see what it looks like going the other way. So this goes up to about 2,500. I wouldn't, again, recommend going that far. I'd say between 10% and 1,000% should be the right amount of zoom you can use. Now if you do go too far at any point, what you can do is use this button to the right and fit all your items into view. So if you have any images on video scribe at that point, what it will do, it will calculate where they all are and zoom to a specific location so you can see all the items currently on your canvas. Okay, you can move the canvas around, it is virtually unlimited, so I would recommend if you want to put a lot of items in, is to use more of the canvas rather than using the zoom in and zoom out. The zoom in and zoom out functions are quite good to get in good effect, so you, maybe if you have a map on the screen and you want to zoom in on a, a particular country, it's really handy for that, but if you've got a lot of items and you don't necessarily need to use the zoom, use more of the canvas, that's the best way to do it. Okay, so just to the left of the zoom buttons, you have these icons here. This is where you can move the canvas in straight lines if you don't want to, use, to do it manually. So you can go up, down, um, left and right, um, press and hold it or keep clicking repeatedly, and um, that will allow you to move it in straight lines. If you're creating scenes on the canvas, so you've got um, scene one in one position, scene two in another, and you want it to um, go from one scene to the other very smoothly, they're really ideal when using in using video scribe so you can do it manually but you might find that it's a bit off center and you might get a slight drift when it goes from one scene to the other so they're quite handy so what we're going to do now is set the camera position so I've used the fit all option um, this button again if I just remind you of it there and I'm quite happy with this particular camera position so I'm going to set the items with this camera position so like I said, you can do it individually if you select an item in the timeline and then you will see on the right hand side you have these new icons activated. So if I select the camera icon, that is the camera position and now the camera position is set on the lady. If I wanted to cancel that, I can just use this icon now which is now activated which is a camera with the X on it. If I wanted to select more than one item with the same camera view, I can. If I press and hold down control while I have one item selected and then click on a next item, I can then set the camera position. So now two items have the same camera position. Or if I have a lot of items on there and I want every single item on my canvas to have the same camera position, I can hold down control and press A and that will select all the items on the canvas and then I can set the camera. So let's have a look at that um, with the new camera position set and see how it looks compared to the first playback. Okay, so now you can see that the camera is in a fixed position, the first item's been drawn, the camera doesn't move, and then the other items are drawn. Okay. Okay then, so the next thing I'd like to show you 
is how to import images into VideoScribe. So um, you can import um, JPEGs and PNG images in. Um, we also recommend using SVG images. So we're gonna um, do that with an SVG image. So first of all, what I would like to do is I'd like to go to a new part of the canvas. Um, so this is my first scene. I'm gonna create a second scene and import the image into that new scene. So I'm going to use the up arrow here so I can keep the lines nice and straight. Okay, so I've got enough space now. Um, so I'm gonna to go to the add image icon in the top left-hand corner, and I'm going to search my folder here. So in the bottom left-hand corner, you've got the folder icon. Okay, so I'm gonna look into my pictures folder. So here you can see I've got a list of different images I can add. So the first two are JPEGs and PNGs. Um, the reason why we recommend SVG images is because you can actually dictate how Videoscribe draws the image. With a JPEG or PNG image, you can bring them into Videoscribe and then you have to set the tracing options. We will go into that in more details in a future tutorial, um, but that's the main difference between the two. You can also convert JPEGs and PNGs into SVGs and we have a tutorial covering that. So please check out our videos uh, page on the instance answers instant answers on our website and you can have a look at that video and see how that is done. Um, so what I'm going to show you is um, two different ways you can create an SVG. So I'm going to use um, the first one here, um, help IT underscore logo SVG one and bring that into the canvas. Okay, I'm just going to set the draw time first of all. So 19 and a half seconds is a bit too long. So I'm going to overwrite that and set it to two seconds. And I'm just going to readjust the size of this particular item and just move it in the corner. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play back this particular item to show you how it's drawn. I don't want to play back the first three items, so I'm going to use the play from here option when I have this image selected in the timeline. So as you can see, it kind of looks like a, a tracing or colouring in effect when I use it. So I'm going to change this image now to show you the different um, SVG style that we have here. So I'm gonna go into image properties and then I'm going to select this icon in the bottom left hand corner which will allow me to change the image. So again, back into the folder icon and then I'm gonna select the second SVG file I have here. Now if you change an image in the image properties option, you do get to preview it first and also adjust um, certain things about it. So um, I'll show you what it looks like in the preview, just here. So you can see here it's drawn in a different style because we've actually um, created an SVG and directed the way Videoscribe draws that particular image. Okay, so I'm going to use this image. I'm happy with that one. And what I want to do now is I want to look and play back this particular item on the canvas just so you can see how it works. Excellent. Okay then. So um, that is importing images. Um, like I say, um, there will be a tutorial on what to do with JPEGs and PNGs. Now what I would like to show you is how to adjust the timings. Um, so you've seen how to do the animate time. Um, there are two other timing options which we're going to go through now. So I'm gonna go back up to the first image and we're gonna go into image properties to adjust these timings. Okay, so as you've been made aware in the previous tutorial, you have the animate time. Now, to the right-hand side of that, you have the pause time and the transition time. Now, the pause time will basically tell or order Videoscribe to pause on a particular image after it's been drawn. So, for example, after three and a half seconds, you will see that it will pause for half a second before it transitions. Okay, the transition time is how long it takes to go from one item to another. And then underneath here, you have the total time, which shows five seconds. Um, you can also check to see how long it's gonna take to move from one element to another by looking on the timeline. So if we go back to the timeline here, you can see where it says start zero seconds. Because this is the first item in the timeline, it starts at zero seconds. And then you've got the end time here, which is five seconds. So you can see here the draw time is three and a half or animate time is three and a half seconds. So you know that between the transition and the pause time, there's an extra second and a half. So what we're going to do with the first three items is we're going to adjust those just so you can see the difference when we play those back. So let's go back into image properties. 
I'm going to keep the pause time at half a second, but I'm going to change the transition time to half a second here. So now you see that the total run time is four and a half seconds, and that is reflected on the timeline now. Okay, so into text properties, again, you have the exact same options, whether it's an image or text when you're adjusting the times. So again, we're going to reduce the transition time to 0.5 seconds. We're going to actually reduce the total animate time to two seconds on the first item as well. And on the last image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some different adjustments to this one. Basically why I'm doing this is to show you the difference between a transition and a pause, to show you how it will look and affect your scribes. So the animate I'm going to bring down to two seconds, I'm going to increase the pause time to two and a half seconds, and I'm going to increase the transition time to three seconds. So it's going to be a seven and a half second running time in total. Okay, so let's play that back and see how it looks. Okay, so you see it's a bit quicker um, by half a second to transition to the next item and now you'll see a longer pause and then a slower transition to the imported image we have there. Okay, all right then, so now you know how to um, fine tune your images and your texts and your scribes with your timings. We're going to save this work. What I'd like to show you now is how to adjust your default settings. So you may find that in your scribes that you want to actually have a set amount of time to animate, you want a set amount of time to transition and a set amount of time to pause. So once you've saved your work and you're happy with that, you can go back to the project screen and in the bottom right hand corner you have the settings option. Okay, so these are all your system defaults. So as you can see here, my current system defaults are the autosave is set to three, second, three minutes, beg your pardon. So every three minutes in the background, there'll be an autosave of the file I'm working on. The default transition time is set to one second and the default pause time is set to half a second. Now you may notice that the default max draw time is set to 30. So if I was importing a JPEG or PNG image, it will go and take 30 seconds to actually import. I'm going to adjust that down to two seconds. And the last item is the default image quality, which is 800px. That's the default, we're gonna keep it like that, which we believe is a good quality. So once I'm happy with those, I can press and save, and that's how you adjust your default settings. Um, so this is the end of tutorial number two. In the next tutorial, we'll be showing you how to enhance your scribes by using effects such as move in, filters, and other image enhancements. Okay, thank you very much.